I don't say good day to you this day of your time. How are you all? <laughs> all right, I will take that as an okay. <laughs> First of all, we would like to thank each and every one of you individually and all of you together collectively, once again, for the co-creation of this interaction, for allowing us to create this transmission with you. Each and every time every one of you allows for these kinds of interactions to occur between our respective civilizations, you help to co-create a link, a bridge between our worlds, between our realities, and in the creation of that link, you create a third world, a third reality, a new idea, a new paradigm, in which many new things, new ideas, new inspirations can be manifest. So we thank you for the opportunity to co-create with you a new idea, a new reality. We would like to begin this transmission in the following way. We recognize that we are communicating to you in an area on your planet referred to as Sedona. And recently we have announced that even though our spacecraft has been positioned above the area on your planet known as Cairo for quite some time, we are now above the area you call Sedona, about 2,500 miles up. You will find that the reason many ships position themselves at this point around your planet is to be of aid and assistance in the balancing of many of the energies of what you call the electromagnetic field of your world to aid and assist in some of the transformations that you as a collective consciousness are now undertaking on your world. Now that you have changed your collective consciousness the vibration and frequency of your reality in such a manner as you have recently done, you have created a kind of shift, a kind of change that allows us now to proceed further with this agenda of assisting you in the balancing of this energy and allows us to move into different positions because now you have created on your planet a very different energy which can now accelerate in positive and constructive and creative and loving ways more than ever before. So first and foremost, we will congratulate you on making a change in your collective consciousness to allow us to interact with you in a new reality. So congratulations. <laughs> now, once again, allow us to explain briefly the idea of what the shift is about in terms of what is actually mechanically happening. We understand that in human language, you have many colloquial phrases for this idea of transformation and changing your world. And that is all well and good, and you can refer to this idea in any way, shape, or form you so desire. It doesn't matter. The effect is the same. But the idea is that we would like to take a moment to explain to you mechanically, physiologically, what is happening. <clears throat> because sometimes when you understand the actual mechanism that you are employing in the change, it helps you make further changes, more profound changes, and have a more profound understanding of what kind of changes can be made. So, I know this is going to sound at first a little bit confusing, but that's all right. This is just an issue of semantics and language, and we will explain more clearly as we go along. So when we talk about the kind of changes that you are making and wish to make on your planet, we will begin this conversation by pointing out that nothing has changed. Why do we say that? I will tell you. Thank you. <laughs> Here's what we mean by nothing has changed. The idea is, really, that when something in your world changes, the world you were in did not change. You changed. You shifted your frequency. You shifted your vibration. And by shifting your frequency, you have shifted your focus of consciousness to an already simultaneously coexisting parallel reality that is already existing on that frequency. You didn't change the world that was there. That world is still there. You have shifted to an already existing parallel reality that is reflective of the vibratory frequency you have shifted to personally. Thus, when you look around and see differences, it's because you have taken yourself 
You have shifted yourself to a parallel Earth that already had those differences in it. The old Earth, the other parallel reality, still exists, still looks the same. Didn't change. But you have changed your focus of consciousness. So the idea of helping people change, of helping to change your world, is the idea, really, of offering other people a point of view that contains a certain frequency, a certain pitch, a certain state of being. And if, 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 if they choose to match, to mirror that frequency you are offering that goes along with that different point of view, they then will see the difference in the world in which they have shifted to. They will see the difference in them reflected by the world they have shifted to. But again, the other world, still there, hasn't gone anywhere. All possible parallel realities exist now, coexist simultaneously. There is only one eternal now. Everything exists in it. We understand that from your linear space-time perspective, this may not seem to be so. But many of you are now beginning to realize this is really just an illusion. The idea really is to understand that what you call different changes, different moments, different places, different times, different experiences, even different lives, all these things coexist at the same time, so to speak. They are really just different perspectives of the same eternal now moment. So what you call the past exists right now. What you call the future exists right now. There really is no future in the future, no past in the past. Those are simply different frequencies, different experiences, all going on at the same time as what you call the present. The idea is that they're simply different viewpoints of the present. And from your linear space-time experience, the perspective you have created with the experience of linear space-time, you can create this idea that something comes before, then something comes next, then something comes after. But it doesn't really do that. An analogy we often use to illustrate this point is what you call one of your film strips on Earth. You know that when you go to watch your movie, it is made of a film strip that has many frames. Well, when you are watching the movie, from the perspective of being an audience member, you can say, well, first we see this frame, then that frame, then the next frame, then the next, and we get this illusion of continuity, this illusion of motion, this illusion of the passage of time, and things start here, and things end there. However, if you are in the projection booth, above the audience, you can take the film canister, you can take out the film, you can stretch out the strip of film in front of you, and you can see all the frames at the same time. You could even look at this frame first, then that frame, then that frame, then that frame, then that frame, in any order you wish. Linear space-time has been, in that sense, nullified. The idea is that all the frames exist at the same time, but from the perspective of the audience member, they only exist in sequence to tell a story, to have an experience. But that doesn't tell you what's actually mechanically happening. It doesn't describe the existence of the film strip itself and the perspective of the projectionist who can see all the frames at the same time. This is analogous to the idea of your physical consciousness in physical reality experiencing linear physical space-time and the idea of your higher mind, your oversoul, experiencing all your moments, all your lives at once. And the idea thus then is the reason you can connect to other lives, other experiences, is because they all exist at the same time. So you can simply cross-connect, shift your vibration. Again, another analogy, as we have often said, your television analogy. At any given moment, you can watch whatever program on your TV set you want. This does not mean there are not other programs available, but you only get the program you are tuned to at any given moment. But when you change the channel, when you shift your frequency, you get another program. Doesn't mean the program you were watching is no longer there. They all exist at the same time, but you only perceive whatever is the vibration you are tuned to within yourself.
And when you change that frequency, you get different input. You get a different experience. It's as simple as that. This really is simple physics. It's really no more complicated an issue than that. And because it all exists at the same time as all the programs at any given moment do on your television set, that's why you can switch back and forth. That's why you can know things from other lives. You may think it is a memory, and in a sense, again, colloquially, you could call it a memory of a past life, or even a memory, or if you wish, a precognition of a future life. But remember, memory is created in the present. It doesn't actually come from the past. When you have a memory, you're having it now. So you're creating it from the now. In fact, because everything actually exists now, not only do you create the experience or illusion of the future from now, you also create the illusion of the experience of the past from now. And that means that when you change your now, not only have you changed your so-called future, you've actually changed your history, literally. Now, knowing this means you can work very powerful miracles. I will give you an example. When you see someone on your planet <clears throat> exhibiting a certain, shall we say, habit, the idea is that sometimes you will see that they struggle to overcome this over a long period of time, but sometimes you will notice that someone can simply arrive at a moment in their lives where they recognize that's simply not something they wish to do anymore. And no matter how addictive that habit may seem, many of you have actually witnessed people or heard of people on your planet saying, no more, that's it, what you call on your planet, cold turkey. <laughs> And the idea is that they do not seem to struggle with it from that point forward. It's as if they never had the habit. I'm telling you that when they change their reality that strongly, the truth is the reason they don't exhibit any urge any longer is because they never have had the habit. Because when you become a new person, literally, you become a new person when you change your frequency every moment. And when you become a new person that has a definition that you do not now have that addiction, do not now have that habit, you actually alter all the other connections. You shift yourself to a reality where you never did. And thus that's why it is not a struggle, not an effort. No longer must you fight to overcome the habit. It simply never existed, so you're having no experience of it now. You can use your reality this way. All it takes is recalibrating your focus to understand that this is how reality is structured. And when you begin to understand this structure, the nature of physical existence in this context, you can evoke and create and manifest very powerful change. Now, I will tell you a secret about yourselves. You are all already, all of you, already, without exception, yes, without exception, yes, without exception, yes. not even you, <clears throat> already as powerful a manifester as you will ever be. You will never be a more powerful manifester than you are now. What you will refine is your understanding of what you are manifesting. <laughs> you will never manifest more powerfully than you do because you already manifest instantaneously. If you didn't, you wouldn't be having an experiential reality of any kind. To have an experiential reality, you must be manifesting it. You must be attracting it. You must be creating it. So look around. You're having a reality. Yes? Yes. So you are manifesting. The secret is, why are you manifesting what you're manifesting? Not, how do I manifest better? You can't manifest any better. You're perfect manifestors. You are made in the image of the ultimate manifester, creation itself. You are perfect manifestors. So please, 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 we would suggest, strongly suggest, we're not telling you what to do. You don't have to listen to us. You don't have to believe us. <laughs> But we would strongly suggest you don't spend time wondering how to become a better manifester. You're already a perfect manifester. What you need to do to see that you are a perfect manifester is focus on how you are manifesting or why you are manifesting what it is you are manifesting. 
And as you change the definition of what you're manifesting, you will see more clearly and more obviously every moment of every day that you are a perfect instantaneous manifester. And now you have gotten a handle on the mechanism underlying the reasons why you are experiencing what you are experiencing. And all of this comes down to belief, definition. Again, this is physics. Your personality, your physical personality, your physical mind is basically an artificial construct composed of beliefs, emotions, and thought pattern actions. When you have beliefs that are out of alignment with your true self, you cannot help but have emotions that are also out of alignment with your true self. And you cannot help but have thoughts and actions that are out of alignment with your true self. But when you have beliefs that are in alignment with your true self, Likewise, emotion follows, thoughts follow, actions follow, and it all works in harmony. So the idea is not to work on becoming a better manifester, but becoming a clearer manifester in the sense of knowing what you're manifesting by knowing what you believe to be true. Because it all stems from belief. Your entire physical reality experience stems first and foremost from what you believe to be true. You cannot even have an emotional response if you don't have a belief first. So when you have an emotion, when you have a thought, when you have an action that you don't prefer, always trace it back to what do I have to believe is true in order to feel the way I do. What do I have to believe is true in order to feel the way I do? That's the first question to always ask yourself when you find yourself in a physical reality experience that is out of alignment with what you prefer it to be. What would I have to believe is true in order to feel the way I do in this experience? If you are feeling something negative, if you are feeling fear, doubt, self-loathing, hatred, anger, shame, Ask yourself, what would I have to believe is true about myself in my relationship to this situation for me to experience this emotion? Because I know that the emotion cannot be there if I don't believe something about myself to be true first. Because you notice that if you don't have a definition for something, you don't know how to feel about it. You don't have a feeling about something you have no definition for. When you do automatically, either consciously or unconsciously, apply a meaning and a definition to something, then the emotions kick in. But only then, and never before. So when you find yourself feeling something, <clears throat> allow yourself to feel it. Don't, in any way, shape, or form, suppress it. But examine and explore why it is there. And the first and foremost reason it is there is because you have a belief. Find out what that belief is. Now, all these things we are talking about here, we can discuss these more in a variety of ways and get clearer and clearer on how to use these mechanisms in a clear and conscious manner so that you can know that all change within yourself is, in fact, instant change. Instant change. And the only way it would seem as if change is not instantaneous is because you are making instantaneous changes that are simply not that different than the change you made before. You see the illusion that is created? If you make an instantaneous change, and in any change, everything does change within you, you shift to an entirely different reality. But if you shift yourself to an entirely different reality that looks almost identical to the last one, you won't really think that anything has changed. You will fool yourself into the illusion of thinking nothing has changed or not much has changed. And that this is a long process and an effort and a struggle. And it takes a long time. Without realizing you have actually changed everything all at once. But it simply looks pretty much the same. Because you have created it to be so with your belief that big change cannot happen quickly. That's the belief that allows you to experience the idea of change happening slowly. But if you understand that every change is a total change, a totally new reality that you've shifted to, then it's an issue of how different you define that reality and the difference, the degree of difference in your definition of that new reality from the other one is what will allow you to see that the manifestation and the change is instantaneous. Because the only way you can gauge instantaneous change is by having a great degree of difference in the change. 
if you don't have a great degree of difference in it, you don't think much has changed, even though it has. So again, the idea of describing to you the notion that every change is instantaneous and every change is total, and I mean total, you are a new person in a new reality, in a new universe, literally, take me literally, please take me literally. <laughs> I am not speaking metaphorically here. Then if you know that that is absolutely, totally different, <clears throat> then you can also begin to understand that it actually can be anything you really prefer it to be. At whatever rate you are comfortable with, and that's usually the big secret, at whatever rate you are comfortable with. Because for many of you, the idea of change is very scary. And you don't really want to change that much, even though you're changing instantaneously, totally. You want to create an experience that says you haven't really changed that. Oh, I don't want to be too different. People will think I'm strange, bizarre, weird, freaky, and all those other wonderful, colorful Earth terminology. <laughs> Nevertheless, the truth is you change everything instantaneously. It is up to you to decide how much you want to take advantage of that fact. It's up to you. The rate, the pace, the style is up to you. All we are doing is letting you know that's the mechanism that's happening so you don't have to spend time wondering how to make amazing, large-scale, rapid, instantaneous manifestations. That you're already doing. All you need to do is focus on why you're doing what you're doing, how you're doing it based on what belief and why, and then you'll get a handle on how to allow yourself to redefine the reality in such a manner as to see whatever degree of change you prefer to see. And that's what it's all about. What idea, what belief is most harmoniously aligned with your true self? Now, we have said, yes, true self, true self, out of alignment, in alignment with true self, true self. What's true self? Here's how you tell what your true self is. Once again, briefly. It is encapsulated in a term that exists on your planet called passion, joy, and excitement. The idea is that vibration, what you feel, that excitement, that physical sensation, is actually the body's translation of the vibratory energy that is your true core inner being. So anytime something in your life contains that degree of excitement, we would again strongly suggest you act on it. Why? Because that's who you are. Because it is most truly you. It is your path. It is your reflection. It is your attractor. It is luring you to more of yourself. That's why things contain that feeling. That's why they reflect that feeling to you. And that's why you can know that if you act on your joy, it will support you because it's your true self. I know, I know, I know. You have many different belief systems on your planet that doubt the ability of your excitement to support you. And we can talk about some of those at length if you wish. Nevertheless, it does have the ability to support you. Why? Because it is you. And it is the part of you that is representative of the part of you that is made in the image of creation. And creation is nothing if not unconditionally supporting and infinite. Abundance, abundance, abundance. We hear this over and over and over and over and over and over again from many humans on your planet. How can I be more abundant? You can't. You can only be abundant in different ways. You are already as abundant as you will ever be. However, if you have a belief that you lack something, then what you have is abundance of lack. <laughs> so again, the issue is not, how do I learn to be abundant? The issue is, what am I defining abundance to be? Because you're always abundant in something. Always abundant in something. This is why we prefer to take the charge off the idea of what abundance needs to be represented by, it can be represented by many things, including money on your planet. There is nothing wrong with that. It is a symbol of exchange. It is a valid one, just like any other symbol. But the idea is it doesn't always have to be that form in order to represent abundance. Our definition of abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Period. <laughs> That's it. The ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Why do you care how it comes to you as long as you have the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it? So the idea is to relax the need, to relax the insistence, 
that it must come in a certain way because paradoxically when you actually insist that abundance can only be represented by one symbol you actually close all the doors through which abundance could come in other forms and so you're actually not being abundant at all in the sense of feeling it or experiencing it in its widest possible format the idea is that somebody could give you something that's abundance you could find something that's abundance it's all abundance. Let it come to you in whatever form works best. Let it come along the path of least resistance. For why should it be a struggle to reflect the idea of the abundance of creation? There is enough. There is enough. There is enough for everyone. If there was not enough of whatever kind of abundance each of you needed to have, if there was not enough for you, believe me, you wouldn't exist. Because the universe, the creation, does not in that context make superfluous mistakes. It does not create more than it's capable of supporting. So if you exist, that means the universe is capable of supporting you or you wouldn't exist. So why not give yourself the benefit of the doubt? If you exist, there must be enough for you and it must come in a form that is actually relevant for what represents your highest excitement, your highest preference. Because nothing else would make sense. Let this be obvious. Let it be logical. This is what our civilization calls the science of the obvious. <laughs> if there are a certain number of people that exist on your planet, then there is enough for all as long as you all allow the abundance to come in the way that actually works for you. Because not everyone needs or wants the same kind of expression of abundance. So the idea is if you all allow synchronicity to show you what your kind of abundance may be at any given moment, and this doesn't mean you can't have this kind then and this kind now and another kind later on. It can change around. But it will change around in such a manner that it will change around in harmony with everyone else's change around. So that if suddenly someone needs this and you need that, and then later you need this and they need that, it will change in perfect harmony, in perfect synchronicity. And you will get it when you need it. At exactly the right place, at exactly the right time. Not a moment before but not a moment later, either. The idea is to understand that you don't have to make any of this work. All you have to do is allow it to work because it already works. It does, it really does. Honest, it does. <laughs> Again, if it didn't, you wouldn't exist. <clears throat> you would not be supported in your existence at all. Please remember how unconditionally supported you are. You are so unconditionally supported by creation that you are even allowed to believe you are not unconditionally supported. That's how unconditionally supported you are. So take it at face value. If you actually have been given the ability to believe that you are worthless, that you are unsupported, that you are nothing, and yet you still exist, what you are being given is a demonstration that the universe is absolutely willing to unconditionally support anything you say is true about yourself. So if it's willing to support you when you say, I'm worth nothing, I am hateful, I am a bad person, I am worthless, if it's willing to support you there, it is certainly willing to support you when you say, I am creative, I am loving, I deserve. There is absolutely no difference in the eyes of creation, no contradiction whatsoever. And when you decide which one is true for you, there is nothing in existence that will contradict you. It will simply reflect whatever you have said is true about you at that moment. Because that's what it means to be made in the image of creation. That you decide, you have your free will to decide who and what you are. And that reflection is given to you through your passion, your joy, your love, your excitement. It's as simple as that if you want it to be. Of course, if you enjoy complication, by all means, please do so. <laughs> because I don't want to take away your fun. And if you feel like struggling, if you feel like making an effort out of it, by all means, do so. Because that's valid too. That's the point. It's all valid. And when it becomes all valid, when you do not judge this as being less than that, then paradoxically you will actually get what you prefer more often because you are not focused on trying not to get that. The idea is that when every choice is equal, then it is easy to choose what you prefer. But if you are afraid 
of certain choices and devalue them, then you're actually devaluing a part of creation and you will only get the reflection that you are devaluing a part of yourself. And therefore, you will be forced, in a sense, simply by the nature of existence, to focus on the thing you are devaluing because that's where your focus is. You're putting undue energy on making it stand out in some way, shape, or form from the rest of the choices that you could make that are all equal. And any time you make something stand out, you're putting energy into it and saying, this needs to be bigger and more important than anything else. And therefore, whether positive or negative, it will be. Until you can relax your insistence that it needs to be so important and allow yourself to know that it will not control you, it will simply respond to you in whatever way, shape, or form you start choosing to respond to the idea of yourself. Again, we may discuss some of this at length. Now, in keeping, first of all, with the idea of the area you are in on your planet, and in keeping with the idea that many of you recognize it as a strong vortex location, we ask the question, what is a vortex actually? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, some of you have described the idea that it is Energy in motion, swirling energy and spiraling motion. Yes. Some of you have said it is a gateway, it is a doorway. Yes. Some of you have said it is a reflection and an opportunity to understand more and more of who I am. Yes. But what is it actually? Well, as you understand the idea of physical reality and know that in a sense it is an illusion, Nevertheless, the experience is real. And the experience, being real, cloaks itself in certain symbols. One symbol being electromagnetic energy. Now, this electromagnetic energy is the first level of physicalization from higher non-physical frequencies of consciousness. This electromagnetic energy, what you may call spirit matter, if you wish, densifies and densifies and densifies and densifies much like the idea of steam to water to ice. All made of the same stuff, you might say, but at different frequencies, different experiences, going from the less material to the denser material of the physical world experience. Again, yes, illusionary, but the experience is real as you describe it and as you have collectively agreed to participate in it to varying degrees. The vortex, therefore, <clears throat> is that which is representative of, shall we say, vibrational harmonic nodal points in your reality that represent all stages of frequency from lowest to highest in that sense, that make up the experience you are having and connect you to higher realms as well. It represents a scale, a spectrum, if you will, of those nodal point frequencies that allow for access into different domains of consciousness. It is in that sense, therefore, capable of being utilized as an unlocking mechanism in a variety of ways according to whatever your imagination is attracted most to. Because every technique and every tool and every situation is what we call a permission slip. Anything like that is actually not doing the thing itself in terms of the changes you feel, but it is reflective of and representative of the idea of your belief system as it might exist at present. And as you find yourself attracted to be in certain locations and take advantage of certain vortices and energies, the idea is that you have attracted yourself to that because that represents the arrangement at that moment of your belief system and that in that it reflects the arrangement of your belief system it gives you insight into yourself sufficiently to allow you to give yourself permission to be more of who you are so it's not like the vortex is doing it for you but the vortex is like a reflection of what you are willing within your belief system structure to allow yourself to give yourself permission to do. So all these things are permission slips to allow you to give yourself permission based on your belief system of allowing yourself to be more of who you prefer to be. In that you have gravitated to this particular one, all of you, 
It is clear that you all have similarity of frequency, even though it is also quite varied. But the idea is that each of you know, each of you are familiar with the idea that this is a reflection of many different levels of frequency, and each of you are able through a variety of experiences and reasons to use this energy in a variety of ways as befits who you are as a being. And you can come together and sometimes work at this in groups or you can do it individually and or both. But the idea is that when you do allow yourself to form that relationship with those nodal points of multiple frequencies up the scale as it were and stand in that energy then what that does is it starts those vibrations going in you all the way up the scale to whatever degree your belief system is willing to handle it in whatever manner, whatever format. And by unlocking those things in that way, <clears throat> it will allow the belief systems that are within you that are out of alignment to be brought to the forefront and dealt with and integrated. And allow them to be transformed into belief systems that are within alignment to the joy, creative love and excitement that represents your true natural vibrational self. So take advantage of it in whatever way, shape, or form you so desire, but understand that as you stand in a vortex, you are the vortex yourself. And the vortex around you is in a sense a projection of the vortex you are, of the nodal point you are, of the multidimensional being you each are. But you are doing that in a way where you can experience it as a larger outer reflection that shows you, in a sense, how big you are. The vortex is you. It's a reflection of the true being, or shall we say a truer representation of the fuller being that you are. So understand that when you stand in a vortex, what you're doing is you're forming a relationship to your greater self. You are opening up and saying, I am willing to have a relationship with my higher self. I am willing to form this connection. I am willing to be more of who I am. And that is a profound commitment. It is a profound relationship. And it creates profound results in your life if you are willing to allow it to do so. It is a bold move, and we congratulate you for making a bold move to be willing to see and experience and be more of yourself.